Hello everyone, welcome to the Django tutorial series. In this tutorial step, we're going to set up Sentry, an application for monitoring and error tracking. Sentry automates exception handling for every programming language and platform, so you can observe and respond to issues up and down the stack. JavaScript, Python, PHP, Ruby, Java, and modern front-end frameworks, and surprise, even serverless frameworks. Make sure to create an account in Sentry. It's pretty straightforward. I already have an account, so I'll proceed with the login. Okay, we've reached the dashboard. I will now click on Create Project. I choose Django. It's our platform choice. For the default alert settings, I'm not going to modify my choice. Leave it as I'll create my own alerts later. My project name will be Django, and it will fall under the team backend. You can assign developers to a particular team so they can access the project. Everything looks good to me. I click on Create Project. Okay, the project has been successfully created. As you can see on the screen, we need to follow these instructions to configure Sentry with Django. First, I will be installing the Sentry SDK package, and next I will copy the configuration into my settings.py file. Make sure when you deploy your application in production that you pass the DSN value, also known as data source name, through the environment variable. To set a uniform sample rate for all transactions, use the traces under sample under rate option in your SDK config to a number between zero and one. For example, to send 20% of the transactions, set traces under sample under rate 2.2. Sentry also excludes personally identifying information, such as user IDs, usernames, cookies, authorization headers, IP addresses, unless you set send under default under PII to true. Okay, we're all set. Let's trigger some exceptions. As per the Sentry documentation, I will perform a zero division error in my application. Currently, there are no events. Let's initiate our first event. I'm going to add a result variable in our create function, which will raise an zero division error exception. I'll be calling my API, and with the result, it will raise an exception, and the event will be passed to Sentry. Let me verify in Sentry whether we have received the new event. Yes, the error has been logged in Sentry, and the best thing is, it's displaying the entire traceback, along with the file name and the line number, where the exception was caught. This is something you definitely need in your production workflow to smoothly track your code along with performance issues. Before moving forward, make sure to revert back your code which is causing the exception. In the upcoming tutorial, we will be focusing on unit tests to make sure our code works correctly.